By now we know that Knifei is great, also known as the Swiss Army knife of data engineering, but there will still be tasks that Knifei will not provide us with out-of-the-box functionality. For example, when you have very complex logic in your scripts and you require custom scripts to be run. But don't worry, Knifei has a solution for that as well. With the help of processor called execute script and execute stream command, we can achieve running custom script through Apache NiFi. So let's see how we can do that. So the first thing you want to do, you want to jump onto the repo in the description and download all the resources we are going to use. So here we're going to have the scripts that are used for the execute script and the execute stream. And then we have the templates. So make sure before you start watching the tutorial, you download all the resources. I'll put the link in the description. Now on the canvas, if you already downloaded and imported on your canvas, the two templates that I have in my repo, let's go in the first one. So we're going to start with the execute stream. So here we have a couple of examples and you can see in the repo as well. We want to demonstrate how we can run a bash command, a Python script, a Java script, and a Ruby script. So let's talk about the execute stream command. What does the execute stream command do? So this particular processor executes an external command on the content of the flow file and creates a new flow file with the result of the command. Let's go over its properties. So if you see here, the first property is command argument strategy. How are the arguments going to be supplied? So in this option, I choose the arguments to be supplied via properties, or you can choose dynamic arguments, which will come with variables. Commands arguments. So this is the command argument I am going to use. In this case, I'm executing this bash script that sits in this particular location. Make sure when you download the template that you change the location to fit your purpose in your particular use. My command that I'm going to use, I'm going to use bash and then bash.sh. So if we're going to copy this location, go to my scripts folder and I will run this, the exact same outcome I should have in NiFi. Let's go to the other option. Argument delimiter. So this is very important. This particular argument delimiter, it's when you have multiple arguments. So let's say I want to say bash one, two, three. In this case, you see I have four arguments and I have them separated by a space. If I were to do this separated by column, then my argument delimiter should be a column as well. So this is very important, otherwise your commands will fail. But since my argument delimiter is set to space, I'll set it back to space and remove the extra arguments. The output destination attribute. If I want the output of my command not to reside in a flow file content, but I want it as an attribute, then I'll have to put the attribute value that he will be set. Max attribute length this is refers if the attribute length should be higher than this value this is the default max value if the, the attribute is going to be larger then you have to increase this otherwise the attributes is going to be truncated let's go ahead and run the commands i'll generate one flow file for this example and execute the first bash command and if we observe here the content the attributes uh, are not, obviously it's going to capture the execution error and there's none. The execution status, which is zero, which is a good thing. And if we look at the body or the return, it's hello world. Now let's go and run the next command. In this case, we're going to run a Python command. Let's execute this once and let's go inside and see how it looks. Basically the same as the bash, the content of the if we're going to do a cat on this Python, it's a simple print. One thing here to note, um, we have to have Python installed locally where the NiFi instance runs. Otherwise, it won't be able to run. So let's run this command as well and observe the output. There you go. Hello from Python. So that's great. So far, we got bash, we got Python. And now let's go and execute a Java command. The same command you want to catch here, you have to compile your code. 
So prior for me to do to run this particular uh, example, you see here I have two Java files. One is the class and one is the compiled code. So if we look at the file itself before we compile it, this is pretty much my print hold. If we're going to run this one, when we're going to run it, we see we only run Java, Java. I know this is confusing. I should have chosen a different name, but my class name is Java. That's, that's what it ended up being. We can see what is the outcome. It's hello world. And if we look inside the print, hello world. Great. Now the final example, running Ruby. You have to have Ruby installed. Let's run the command. Uh, we look at the output and hello world from Ruby. If we're going to go and check the script, very single liner, my type of code. Great. So this is how we run a streaming command. There are n use cases here, but in the same, be mindful that this particular processors, including the execute stream command, they are part of this group called restricted components. The administrator of NIFI should be aware when somebody is using restricted components because the restricted components, um, they have the ability to run user-defined code, pretty much what we're demonstrating right now. The counterpart is they can alter the local host file system. I will be against running custom script, but when your hands are tied and there's no way around it, then you should be very careful and you should address this with very tight ACL or security access policies. All right, next, let's move to the more exciting part of this tutorial, execute script. So the execute script command, it's a different command than execute streaming command. Well, this particular execute script will accept an incoming flow, will execute the script on top of the flow, and the process session. It's responsible for handling the incoming flow file, for example, receiving the success connection to it, as well as the flow file created by the outcome of the script. If the handling of the script or if the handling of the flow file is incomplete or incorrect, the session will roll back. So let's go over a couple of examples. Let's see how we can create a new attribute. So the first thing I'll do, I'll generate one flow file that will go to all of them. You see, I'm having a funnel here and basically I'm creating seven clones here out of the one. What we're going to do, we're going to go over the properties of the execute script. First property we have here is the script engine. In our case, we're going to use Python, but let's go over them. So we have closure. We got ES scripts or JavaScript. We got Groovy, Lua, Python, and Ruby. As a note here, the Python, Python is actually running Jython. So be mindful that there's a limited amount of libraries that can be used. So the script file, if you have the file in a script, in this case, we're going to use the script body. So you basically, you can run your, we can create a script and then place it here. The final property is module directory. Um, this would be a comma separated list of path and or directories um, that are required by your script to run, such as let's say you want to import modules that they don't come with the default um, API. Let's go and look at the script body and see how this looks. Basically, what we're doing here, we're just going to take the incoming flow and we're going to add a new attribute called message with the value hello world. Let's apply this one and let's review before this that the attribute is not in the incoming queue. In the in incoming flow file. So if we look at the attribute, uh, there are no attributes called message. I have some default attributes here that I've set so I can demonstrate the, the next script. So let's run this once and let's look at the queue. Great. So we can see a new attribute was created with the value hello world. Let's go to the next example. Create a new attribute using existing incoming attribute. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take one of the attributes that we set previously and we, we're going to take this particular attribute called my attribute. We're going to capture the value and we're going to uh, concatenate it with some strings. So you can see here I'm creating a new message and then 
generate a new attribute called message and attach the message, which is this particular created attribute. So let's run this one and let's look at the flow file. So we can see here the message it's now having my attribute blah blah, which is the value of this particular my attribute updated. So that's how we update an incoming uh, attribute. Next, let's go to the next example. Create multiple attributes from a list. This is a very, I would say this is a very used by me in particular um, script. This is an example. You have a list of attributes, a key value pair that you want to expose it to your flow file when the flow file starts. To give you a good example where I'm using this, I have a bunch of uh, parameter store keys with particular values that are updated by my end by 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 my user, which I don't really want to know when they update it. And whenever the flow runs, he will go and pick always the latest. So if you look here, we have this particular attributes payload. So if we're gonna go and review the attribute value, this attribute payload has a key value pair uh, here. You have attribute one, value one, attribute two, value two, attribute three, value three. The script is gonna read it and then he's gonna set session attributes. So we use session put all attributes and we're gonna pass that attribute payload. We see here we're using JSON module for this one. So let's run it and let's see what happens. Review the flow file that it's in the queue. And you can see right now we have one attribute one with value one, attribute two, value two, attribute three, value three. So this is very powerful in, in most of my use cases, I use this. Sometimes I capture the parameter context value and I expose it as attribute so I can use it more dynamic and use the expression language out of the box functionality for that. So we talked about how we manage attributes. Now, now let's see how we can work with the flow content. In this example, we're going to override the flow content. What we're doing here, we're going to capture the incoming flow and we're going to override it with this particular string. So basically the incoming flow for this example, uh, let's look at it before we're running it. It's a JSON body. So let's go ahead and run this one and look at the outcome. Let's review the list, the queue, and go to the view and we can see that the incoming flow file content was a JSON and now we have this particular string. So you can inject your logic, you can connect to multiple services and such and have this done. Write to flow file content. As similar as previous run, we're not gonna capture the incoming text. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna run, we're just gonna write to it. So basically same action as before, but there's no, I would say it's an implicit overwrite. So if we look at this one as well, we just run it it will have hello world. Let's go and run append to a flow file content. So basically what this will do, we'll read the incoming flow file content. You see we have a processor here that will read the input stream. And then what we do, we add a new line and say hello world. And then we write it back. Let's run this one. Please. And you can see here, this is the default payload that comes from generate flow file and we've appended this hello world string. How do we remove element and write it back? So in this example, what I do, I'm using that JSON payload that we had and using the JSON library, we're going to remove one element from it and then we're going to write it back without it. So in this case, what we're doing, we're just removing the key called name. So if you look at the payload, look at this queue and what I'll do, our payload should remove this key called name and we should only have one. Many people say, yeah, we can use out of the box Jolt or you can use JSON path. I know, but you know what? They will reach a point where you want to write more complex transformation and this is one way you can do it. So if you run this and we look at the list, let's view the content, you see we end up with a single key there. In our final example, um, we're gonna a more complex JSON file and we're gonna transform it into a comma separated file output. So if you see here we have candidates and we have a list inside of them. So how can we accomplish this 
and only capture ID in candidate and then format the CSV. So let's run this once and let's look at the particular script, evaluate its content. So basically, first thing we're going to do, we're going to read the input stream. We're going to read it as JSON and then we're going to have a for loop. What we're going to uh, with on the for loop, we're going to append it to the output stream. And then at the end, we're going to write it to the flow file. So let's see what's the outcome of this. Let's list the queue, review, and there you go. We have a comma separated list of values. Let's review what we've done here. We saw how we can use execute script and execute string command to run custom scripts in NiFi. I personally use it not very frequently, only when I have my hands tied. But you have to be mindful because these components are restricted. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you found this content useful. If so, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing and drop a comment.